Hi, this is Jason, and this will be a short video about how to import uh, an existing inventory of trees into iTree Eco version 6. Uh, so what we're looking at here, this is just an Excel table that I exported from a GIS, uh, and I'm going to try and import in this into iTree Eco version 6. Uh, and this was just a, a town's ash inventory, then they were getting prepared for uh, potential emerald ash borer impacts. Uh, so a couple of things to know with this that, that's unique is we only have a few species here uh, and occasionally we do have some missing records uh, and I'll talk about how those are handled in ECO. So when you get to trying to import into iTree ECO version 6, the first thing you'll need to do is go ahead and create a, a new shell project that's going to hold your data that you're going to import. So what you want to do is you're going to go ahead and create a complete inventory. Uh, currently that's the only thing you can import. You can't import uh, plot data at this time. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And I'm just going to give this a name. And we're just going to set up the project the way we normally would. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because uh, it's covered in some of the other videos we have. Once you have all your location information and you get to the data collection options tab, you want to make sure you set up the fields that you want to import. So essentially you're creating an empty shell. You want to make sure you have those fields in there so that they can accept data. So I know that my project is English. We always have to have at least species in DBH. In this case, uh, I'll go ahead and check strata area. And this is important to do uh, even if you're doing a complete inventory. If you provide the area, you'll get more accurate results. And there's a couple uh, tables that won't be available unless you provide uh, the total acreage uh, or area of your project. I have GPS data and I also have uh, percent dieback and you'll see this is both condition and percent dieback. Essentially condition is a, a positive rating so 100% would mean you have a completely full crown um, and 0% condition would mean you have complete dieback and that's just the inverse of dieback so 100% dieback would be equal to a 0% condition rating. Uh, and I'll show you how that works as far as import goes here in a second. So now we've got all our empty fields set up in our project. And I mentioned we want to provide the area. So we just need to click on that project in strata area. And in this case, I'm just going to provide my total city area, which was 6,272 acres. Then we hit OK. So we have our shell projects set up now. We can go ahead and import. So we're going to go ahead and click on the data tab there and select trees. And now you can see our import option is available. So we'll go ahead and click on import. And we can select our file. Uh, and there's a bunch of different file formats you can import from. Uh, a bunch of Excel spreadsheets, access databases, and uh, a few text files. Uh, we have an Excel spreadsheet in this case. And it'll take a minute to think about it depending on how large your inventory is and then it should pop it up. If your data is on a different worksheet, you can select that here. Our first row does contain our column header, so I'm going to check that box. And then we'll hit Next. And at this point, we're just going to tell it which columns uh, are supposed to be imported into uh, which variables that ECO expects. So I'm going to go ahead and start with our Species column. And from the drop-down over here, what these are the variables that ECO expects, we'll go ahead and pick species. Then it wants to know what type of field it is. So in this case, it could be the common name, the scientific name, or a species code. I'm going to go ahead and select common name. And you could import any one of those. If you have a whole lot of different species, it may be worth your time to convert those to ECO species codes in Excel before importing. And if you want to do that, we have the whole ECO species list. Uh, it's available here in our archives. So that's under resources, archives, iTreeco version 6 resources, and right down here is the whole species list. So you could use that to do uh, conversions outside of iTree. But since we just have a few species, uh, it'll work out okay in this case. But you can see I've got red exclamation points next to all these. That's because Eco can't figure out exactly what species to match these up with. In this case, we have ash. We don't have a space in the middle there, and, and things are kind of backwards. Eco may expect white ash. So when you get these red exclamation marks, you can either go ahead and fix them in your Excel sheet and try and import again, or you can decide to map your fields. And in the next step, we'll be able to say exactly which species each one of these names goes with. 
So just moving down the line, we can go ahead and do our DBH. That's our DBH in inches. So I just clicked on the column and then selected DBH. That's going to import fine. You can see no red exclamation marks. Now we'll go to our percent dieback. Like I said, percent dieback is going to be converted to condition uh, percentage in this case. So I'll go ahead and select crown condition. And it wants to know our field type. So we could have an ID number in there. We could have a description. So a description would be like good, fair, poor. Um, or we can have the percent dieback. And what we actually have here is the percent dieback. So we'll go ahead and click on that. You can see some of these come in. Uh, you know, Eco knows what zero is, but most of them don't. So we're going to go ahead and have to map those as well. So I'll check that map column. And lastly, I'm going to go ahead and do the lat long over here. So we click on longitude, select that down here, click on latitude over here. You can see that uh, there's no errors in those either. Those are just what eco expects. So from there we can move to the next step which will allow us to map these. Uh, we can go ahead and do our species first. You can see we, we must have some blanks in our database. If we just leave this so that there's no matched eco value then it won't import those. It'll just skip right over them. Um, which is okay in this case. So here we need to get to green ash. So, so I'm just going to click here and start typing and pick green ash. You can do the same for white ash. And you'll see the black ash came in okay just because it was written in the way that Eco expected. So after our species mapping, we're good. We can go down here to dieback. And you can see our dieback. We just need to pick which one of these we want to map to. So Eco actually uses the midpoint numbers of these different dieback categories. So we'll want to go ahead and pick whichever one is closest. In some cases, if you have a bunch of these, it may be, again, easier to do the conversion in your Excel sheet. But here we'll just do these to the nearest uh, midpoint. And then we can go ahead and hit Next. You can see our import results here. We had a bunch of records that were skipped. Those were the ones that typically had blanks or unmatched values. So you want to make sure that the records that are actually imported matches what you expect. And if we go over here, you can see we have about five records here. And if we go all the way down the bottom, uh, we're up at 5,815. So we should subtract off one for the header in those five. So we should be at 5,809. And that's exactly what we imported. So if everything looks good, you can go ahead and hit finish and it'll take a second for eco to import your data. This will take longer uh, depending on the size of the database you're trying to import. And now you can see we're just back to the data table and here's our imported data. So we could edit it here. We could already submit it for processing if that's what we wanted to do. Uh, but that's really all there is to importing an eco v6.